Hey, David. Hey, good morning. How are you? Good. Good. And how do you pronounce? Is it Denny's? Yes, it's just Dennis. Den oh, Dennis, okay. And what company are you from? Um, from Oracle. Oracle, okay, cool. Just wanted to get you in the attendance. Thank you. Hi, Rachel. Rachel, are you there? And someone named Theo just joined. Are you actually there? Theo? Could be the challenges of getting the uh, unmute button to work too. <laughs> it could be. Theo or Rachel, you guys there? All right, maybe not. Rachel, are you there now? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I had the <laughs> volume down. I couldn't hear you. Oh, okay. No problem. Just want to make sure I hear you for the attendance. Thank you. Oops. Get my thing on the right page. And Theo, are you able to talk yet? Okay. Still no word from Theo, whoever that may be. I don't think we've had a Theo yet on the call. Hey, Lee. Hey, good morning. And Mr. Daniel. Daniel, that IO, please. <laughs> hey, don't get into that yet. And William, are you there? William? All right. What about Ben, are you there? Good morning. Glad to be here. Good morning. All right. Let's see who I'm missing. Hey, I'm here as well, Doug. I'm sorry. Who's that? Hey, William. Oh, hey, hey, William. Okay. And hey, Chad. I see you. That's good. Uh, let's see. Who else can I? Hey. hey. While we're waiting. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, um, Thomas. Thomas. Yes. Oh, sorry. Too many people typing in one spot. I'll back off, Chad. <laughs> Um, Thomas, I heard you, right? Yep. Uh, what about Baram? Baram, you there? Can you hear me? Yep, got you now. And what about Steve-O? Steve-O, you there? What about Joe Sherman? David Lyle, you there? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Uh, let's see who else I can pick on. You're on, you there? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. And let's see, Klaus, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Excellent, thank you. 
Actually, if you guys want, you can also just speak up and say your name as you join. Sarah's here. Hey, Sarah. I added myself. I'm not sure it's funk yet. Yep, I got it. Thank you. Let's see. Who else can I identify? Hello. Hi. Hi, who's that? Sorry, there's a lot of background noise. I couldn't hear. Oh, so okay, got it. Thank you. We have Alex on the call. Yeah, we got Alex Debris from Service Inc. here. Service Inc. Thank you. Yeah, here's Kathy Wong from Huawei. Hey, Kathy. Hi. Kathy, I got you. And Mark, are you there? Yep, I'm Excellent. here. Orit, are you there? What about I'm here. Steve? Thank you. And what about uh, Steve-O? Can you I hear me now? Thing? Yep, gotcha, thank you. Good. Uh, did it, uh, do we have Theo yet? Actually, did Theo vanish? I think Theo vanished. Okay, I don't know who that one was. All right, give you another 30 seconds or so. Is there anybody on the call who is not in the attendee list? Let me paste the uh, agenda into the chat again in case you don't have it. Is there anybody on the list who does not have an asterisk next to their name? I think I got everybody so far. Oh, Joe Sherman, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Excellent, thank you. Chat, already got you. Put the asterisk there so I don't miss it. All right. Austin, don't have you yet. Mr. Austin, are you on the call? Austin? I'm here. There you are. I figured you'd be there. All right, tell you what, why don't we go ahead and get started? Oh, say uh, one more. Uh, Chris Anacek, you there? Yes. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> don't sound so excited. Okay. Um, all right, why don't we go ahead and get started, kind of full agenda here. So first up, um, just a little bit of warning. We may actually do a, a vote for the very first time. And this is a very important issue, so I wanna draw people's attention to it. And let's scroll down a little. Uh, Austin asked through the Slack channel, should our official uh, domain name be cloudevents.org or cloudevents.io? Now this is obviously critical importance to us. So we're gonna to to take a vote on this later. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this now though is because each company is only gonna get one vote. And so you guys need to discuss among yourselves which, how your particular company is gonna vote. So I figure you probably need most of the call to decide that because it's so important. But uh, we will probably be taking a vote later on. Now keep in mind, if for some reason you guys think it's unfair to spring this on you and you wanna wait another week, you can mention that it's part of it and we'll defer it. But if no one really objects, we're gonna do a vote later. So just think about that as we go through the rest of the call. For, for those of us that didn't see the Slack channel, is there a pros and cons for one or the other? We're gonna to get to that later. I don't wanna wrap okay. it yet. I'm gonna save the rat hole for later. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. But I just wanted more people to start talking about it. All right, um, action items. I'm not gonna go through these, just as a reminder, Austin, since you have some out there. The only thing I do wanna ask is, didn't you transfer the domain ownership to CNCF already? Um, the email is drafted. I've got authorization codes for, for both domains. I'm just waiting on this last issue of what domain is actually gonna be our primary domain. So as soon as, I could, as soon as we get clarity there, I, you know, the email's drafted. I'm gonna send it over to Eric on, who I've been chatting with at the LF, who's gonna handle this. All right, okay, cool. So it's almost done. All right, thank you. And then just remind you, you have two other outstanding ones that are in the backlog. All right, uh, white paper status. Uh, the final review of the document and the PR material is currently underway. Uh, we are hoping to get it done in time for the serverless conference in Paris. I believe that's next week. So hopefully that'll be wrapped up really soon. Uh, that'll be good. Um, and let's go ahead and then jump into PR review. I tried to order these based upon hopefully the easy ones first. But hold on, wrong window. Do, 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 href checker. So this one, 
just updated the href checker because Sarah actually included a title in one of her links inside a markdown document and the tool did not support that. So I just changed it to actually support it. Um, totally non-controversial, it doesn't obviously impact the spec, it's just checking things to make sure our hrefs aren't broken, we make sure we don't get 404s and that kind of stuff. Um, while in there, I also I needed to change uh, the way the verify phrases work. So this is the, this is the tool that checks upper and lowercase uh, RFC keywords. Um, and really the issue here was that said on a Mac works differently than said on Linux. So I had to change the way said works in both tools. Um, very straightforward though, just modifies the tools, does not modify any of the documents whatsoever. Is there any questions on that? Or are there any questions on that? All right, any objection to approving that one? So I'd just say that like, I would suggest that I just test it locally so that you have another human who tests it and provided it, if people approve it, if yeah, we test it, we check know, it in. I, I, just let you know, I did test it on both Mac and Linux. Thank you so much for doing yep. that, by the way. Yep. So obviously if there are other issues people will find later on, feel free to let me know or just open an issue and I'll, I'll get it fixed. But as of right now, I do believe it works in both worlds. So any objection to obje accepting that one? Cool. All right, next one. Okay, very quick little minor typo. Um, the word two was duplicated there. I'm hoping no one objects to removing the second two. Any objection to that one? Okay, so quick question for you guys. For issues like this or PRs like this that are so blindingly obvious, yes. is there any objection to me or one of the admins waiting a day or two to make sure there isn't something that we're missing, but if it's something as obvious as this that we have merged it or do you guys wanna follow the process explicitly and wait until this Thursday phone call? I would like, I'd like us to be able to just take care of that okay. immediately. Okay, is there any objection to the blindingly obvious ones like that being merged? Not here. Okay. Nope. If obviously we still- Yeah, I think that's back. referenced in the governance model, isn't it? It may be, I can't remember for sure, but I, I just wanted to double check with you guys before I took the liberties. So, yep. figured it's- do you, still, do you still expect to get a, a couple of LGTMs before it gets merged? I would actually really like that if you guys could. Um, that way, just to double check for my sanity's sake. So I, that's why I want to wait at least a day or two. Yes. Yeah. So if you guys can LGTM those, it'd be wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I think that like I've run open source projects where at least one other person in the community has to plus one or LGTM something that so that nothing gets merged with only one eyes on it. Okay, that's fine. We'll wait till at least we get one more. I, I have no problem with that. All right, next one. Um, all right, this was as a result of last week's phone call. There was a request to actually add some of that uh, Git help that we ran through on the call into the contributing doc itself. Here, I just removed some trailing spaces. The bulk of the actual text is right here that just says, um, make sure you sign it and to make sure that this line and that line actually match because I believe that's what the DCO checker is verifying or looking for. Any questions on this one? All right, any objection to approving this one? Approved. All right, not hearing any objections. All right, um, ba -da -ba -ba. next one. <clears throat> All right, um, Mark, Mark, did you wanna talk to this one? Or is he on the call? He may not be on the call. All right, so this one, actually, I'm sorry, this is William, isn't it? Yep. Did you want to talk to this one? Uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. That was a comment that I believe Sara made in the last call about making sure we document ways for people to assign work. That's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. Basically, just make a, make a comment in the issue and we'll assign it to you. Any questions on this one? I have a question. So here is a maintainer will then add the assigned label. So who is the maintainer? Is it you, Doc? As of right now, it's me. Um, I think Chris Anacek can also do it. I'm not sure who else is a maintainer or owner, to be perfectly honest. But as of right now, I've been taking on the actions to do that. I'm also one, Doug, if you need me to do Oh, anything. there you go. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, was that Ken? Yep. My oh, wow. You finally joined. 
Yeah, my, meeting, my my conflict in meeting got canceled. So I... Hey, welcome to the group. <laughs> no, it's good to be. It's good to be back in the meeting. So I... All right. Yeah, and Doug, I think I can uh, merge as well. This is Mark. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, okay. Back to the grind. Um, is there any objection to this one? All right. Not hearing any. Let me mark that approved. All right, adds communication info to our README. Okay, this one, what did I do here? Uh, remove trailing spaces. Just added some information to our README about our email list, our Slack channel, our meeting times. For the most part, this was just a copy and paste from the main working group's README. So there shouldn't be anything, um, uh, that you, that you sh there shouldn't be any surprises in here, basically. And then, of course, a link to our meeting minutes. Like I said, just from our original README. Any questions on this one? All right, any objection to adopting this one? All right, cool. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was on mute. Yep. I'm, I don't object to adopting it because I think it's, it's net positive, but I think we should be a little careful because there was some confusion in January about when the meetings were because things got out of sync. So then if there are any changes to this, we should think about refactoring it so that it's in one place. But I think it's like it's great to have documented. Yeah. At this point. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll think about whether it's possible to have things in one spot. It's going to be a little hard because we have at least two different readmes at play. But I'll, I'll think about it. Okay. okay. Great. Yep. All right. Next one. Um, do, 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 do. Issue. I'm sorry. PR forty nine, which was for issue six. Um, Suas, you want to talk to the changes in this one? Suas. It's, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. It's, it's very simple. Uh, it was confusing. Mm -hmm. uh, the words message, event, and notification uh, were used in a way. They were not introduced before. They were used for the first time, uh, assuming that people didn't, didn't know the meaning of those. So just change the wording so the ambiguity is removed. Okay. Any questions on this one? Um. I thought elsewhere it said that occur that occurrences were uniquely identified. Um, so that's it, inconsistent with other docs, I think, but it doesn't change the content here. So I think that's just been... making. I don't know if somebody has an opinion on that. Sorry. Change content, yes. It just uh, the end just thing, so it's clear what is meant by message, what is meant by notification, what is meant by event. Yeah, I think someone else was trying to speak in there too, besides Sarah. Who else was trying to speak? Uh, that was me, um, Thomas. I I don't know if I missed one of the meetings where this was clarified, but it's just been an open item where we talked about, for example, like minimum entropy or global unity is for an event. Um, I know it's been discussed several times, but I'm not aware of any time we actually resolved that it must be globally unique. So I don't think Okay, this so then this doesn't change the meaning, it's just emphasizing the may, which I think is correct given our use of the um standard. So um and I do think that this is a clarification and then we can sort of separately talk about whether um events are globally unique. Right. I was I gonna say that is an open question. Yeah, I was gonna say this text doesn't talk about uniqueness one way or the other, so I don't think it changes that and it, people can still open up PRs to address that issue. Well, I mean, I think that it, it's highlighting that the May is all caps and that, you know, like, I think it is a clarification of as currently written and doesn't change the semantics. It just formalizes them in a way that, you know, I think is, it clarifies that there is an issue there or not. Ah, uh, you're right. I, I'm sorry. I missed that. Okay. You're right. So I think it is correct to capitalize it because given the semantics of the um, RFC, um, but I think that, you know, I'll look through the issues and I'll open an issue if we want to make that required. Right. Any other comments? So or okay. Any other comments or questions on this one? Looks good to me. Okay. Any objection to this one? Any objection to adopting, I should say. All right. Not hearing any objection. We approve it. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Next one. 
um, uh, actually, I have a question for the um, previous item. Yep. So, um, so this is a clarification, but um, but I think one point is the events. Um, no, yeah, here. So the events is uniquely. Uh, no, each each occurrence may be uniquely identified with data in the event. Uh, could be also identified by the context, right? Because we not just because here it mentioned, you know, it, it include context and data. I remember some, some other, I read in some other places, it said, it said, you know, it can be identified with context too. Because the unique identifier, we, you know, different, different uh, manufacturer, I mean, even sources, we put the identifier into, maybe sometimes into the context and data, sometimes into the data. William, did you want to talk to that? We should have another account, another issue to address that, to track that, or we we should modify here or discuss here. Well, I think that this is exactly the point that I was, or it's related to the point I was bringing up. I think that since since the edit doesn't change the meaning, um, I propose we accept this, and then whoever wants to can like open up an issue about the uniqueness question. It, like I, I need to reread the spec to look, really think about where uniqueness is mentioned to propose something specific. And you know, somebody else wants. I, I think any of us can propose that we clarify the uniqueness question. Yeah, are you okay with that, Kathy? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. So I think I'm going to pose that issue. Okay. Yep, that sounds good. And obviously, that's true for anything we we approve. You know, people can follow on PRs to help clarify things if they think it's needed. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So moving forward then, um, is this the right one, 48? Yeah, make this can be read about data. Okay, yeah, so this one's mine. So this one just made it, tried to make it clear that, what is it, event type, uh, event type version and schema URL are all related to the information within the data property. And that's basically it. So that's why I, you can see all the, the highlighted text just focuses on basically putting quotes around data and stuff like that, and or adding the word data where, where appropriate. Any questions on that or comments? Thumbs up. All right, any objection to adopting that? All right, cool. Um, I oh. haven't. I haven't had a chance to internalize it. I'm not going to block it. But one thing I'd like to request is if, like, in advance of the meeting, we can tag the things that are likely to be talked about, because I'm having trouble keeping up with all the things that are. So if you look at the you agenda, know. yeah, if you look at the agenda doc, as soon as I start getting the sense that an, that a PR is settled down, I add it to the agenda. So the agenda, things like this have been on the agenda for several days in advance. Um, okay. When so I try I'll to check out the agenda. Yeah. In advance I, of the meeting. Thank yeah, I, I try to remember to send out a note, but sometimes, to be honest, I just forget or get busy. But the agenda doc will always have the list of PRs that I think are ready to go at least a couple of days in advance. Okay, then I'll start from there when I'm looking at things. Okay. Yep. Sorry, I should have mentioned that before. Hey, Doug, did we put the agenda doc in that PR that adds the uh, meeting information to the main readme? I believe so, but let me just double check. You did. I checked this morning. Oh, okay, I cool. I appreciated it very much. Thank you. Yep. Okay. okay. It is Great. there. Thank you. All right, uh, where are we? Add context to battery. I think that's the next one. Wait a minute, update read me. Sorry, I think I missed one, number 30. What did I do here? Um, okay, I think I just made some updates to our readme, just add pointers to, wait, what doc, what repo is this? Okay, so this is in the main, working group repo itself. This is not in the uh, cloud events readme, just to be perfectly clear which repo we're talking about here. So what I did here is I added some links to our white papers and our serverless landscape spreadsheet because apparently they were missing. Um, I then uh, added some more pointers to our cloud eventing work. Um, talked about a, uh, a, I'm sorry, provided a pointer to our proposals directory where I then later on have a readme that talks about how to add ideas for future work items, right? I talk about how to submit a new proposal by adding something to the proposals directory and then 
adding it to our agenda doc so we can talk about the next meeting if you think it's ready to be discussed. Um, and then I added a comment here that said, basically, if the proposal extends the scope of what the TOC has already agreed to that we work on, that, it, that we're probably gonna have to take this back up to the T TOC for review and approval, just as a sort of a foreshadowing of the process people are gonna have to go through. And then down here, we have the list, we have events as something that's already um, underway. But that's basically it. It's just adding more information to our main working groups repo, uh, you know, about our process and what we're doing. Any questions on that? Yeah. Doug, is there a way to add like a calendar object? A calendar object. Like when you click and it sort of uh, downloads into your uh, like Outlook? I don't know. I, I, you know. Honestly, every time I try to go to the Google Calendar and try to do a download of a, of a single event, it never seems to work for me. So I may need some help on that one. But if someone could figure that out, I'd, I'd love a PR to do that. So uh, to talk for the future work items, I remember there's a Google Doc that, you know, people add, add, add you know, new. Yes. Is I was going to here. I was going to propose that we actually remove that because oh. I, I prefer for us to track it in a more structured way using PRs. So I, later on, I was going to suggest that we actually remove this and have you put this into a PR in the proposals directory. Oh, okay. So maybe we should, you know, remove this link. Otherwise, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. I was going to do that once we accepted it, um, but I didn't want to do it until then. And that way people can actually have a, a back and forth conversation about your proposal because this Google Doc really isn't the best spot to have the back and forth conversation. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. Any other comments on this one? All right. Any objection to adopting it? All right. Hold on a sec. Do, 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 do. All right, add content type attribute. Who was this one? You're on, this one's yours. You wanna to talk to it? Yeah, so, so basically uh, the data is not really defined if it's like a JSON or a text or any other serialization format. And what we discussed originally in the original proposals was to have a, a content type pretty much like an HTTP that will define the serialization method of the data object. Yeah, so you added that and then just to drop people's attention to it, down in the data section, he added this if statement with a must down there. I'll make sure everybody sees that as well. So I think there was some debate about whether that, like we should encode things twice, right? So we're gonna have to take all of these attributes and figure out how they're encoded for specific protocols and without the context of how we're gonna do the metadata encoding, to have a, another attribute that does the content encoding seems unexpected. I, I think those are different things. I think the metadata or the context of encoding needs to sort of be uh, per protocol implementation. And uh, while the data encoding is, you're already defined here, sort of arbitrary payload. So you need to define someone that's going to consume it, how he's going to consume it. So maybe we need some, some time down the road to say, you know, if you're going to send a message over HTTP, so both sides will be able to intercept that, you need to define how they're uh, serializing the context or over AMQT right. or MQTT, et cetera. But the point is that in an API object, you're not supposed to to understand uh, how those things arrive because you're defining them as a string. So you don't need to decipher it. If, if you're saying, okay, I'm gonna map this definition to an API, it's very easy to define that, uh, for example, you had their like schema is a string, I know how to decipher it. But data, there's not, nothing that tells me how the data is organized. So I think- yeah, so I guess my question is, is I'm reluctant to create a specification where any event producer can say, oh, this is in JSON, and this is in XML, this is in, you know, all these different formats, and then every parser, then every consumer of those events needs to support a huge range of different formats. That, you know, maybe we should consider that there's some more detail on that that prevents just sprawl of different formats. 
Um, I'm also a little bit cautious. I, it's never been entirely clear to me whether we are defining um, logical types, memory types, or transport types. And, um, you know, for example, with the Firebase SDK for Cloud Function, uh, we have non-serializable types that we actually expose to the developers. So we have, like, we take underlying JSON and construct actual objects that are native to whatever SDK, um, which it seems like with a content type would, would disallow, uh, at least if we're talking about in-memory objects, because it's no longer JSON. It's actually, for example, a JavaScript object that has actions on it. Right, again, you need to look at it from a different perspective. There is a, a you know, eventually those ev events need to be mm -hmm. produced and consumed by different entities. You know, one would be, let's say, a serverless function. The other one would be someone generating an event that an S3 bucket was created, okay? For those two entities to communicate, we need to agree how they transfer the, the message. So you can uh, go in, within the function and define that, you're going to deserialize it because you assume that someone serialized it in JSON, for example. Uh, okay. But there are many cases where JSON is not the right solution to serialize or deserialize. Absolutely, and, and so uh, to clarify, like, I'm, in, I'm in favor of actually being explicit about what the transfer encoding is or the, the, the coding of the object in the transport method, but I don't know that it necessarily, um, I think that that's a property of it when it's on the wire, not necessarily when it's in memory, and it's not clear which the spec is talking about. There have been a number of conversations about the difference between an event and a message, and I wonder if perhaps content type is more appropriate on the message than the event. That, that depends if we're saying that the API that we'll create for every language mm -hmm. is essentially mm -hmm. going to do the deserialization. If you're saying that you know for the Python, uh, Go, Java, etc., uh, API definitions, it's essentially a language-dependent object which is already deserialized. Uh, then you don't need the content type. If you're saying, okay, I'm going to leave it to the uh, application to decide if it wants to deserialize or deserialize portions of the event, etc., then you would need some way to decide on that. Or potentially in the API object, you could even define two ways to consume the event. One is sort of a row, uh, and one which is a sort of deserialized. So I think someone earlier asked the question of all these various types that we're talking about, are they, are they describing how it appears on the wire versus in memory? And it's always been my assumption that, uh, I think anyway, that all these things apply to what's in memory in terms of what would uh, say an application see if it was to access some of these properties? Is that different than what other people were thinking? I mean, I just yeah, but isn't that language dependent? Yeah, I mean, content type, we, we, we intend to do routing based upon pools. And, and that's assumed any content type routing or, or would be done on the product at the protocol level that any, that basically everything inside the body message would just be the, the event and the data that the already determined runtime would use the object. That's been our assumption for a long time. Yeah, so. Yeah, my, my assumption is, was that we were discussing things that would be, yeah, eventually they would be runtime, but they could also be transmitted over a wire protocol. Yeah, and, and my assumption is fairly yeah. similar. This is, that this is the logical type, which will translate very cleanly to a in-memory type, but uh, we will then probably need to, once it stabilizes, go to the HTTP spec, uh, which means that like, we might unroll certain nested fields or say extensions are x dash, uh, in which case the content type will actually just fall out naturally because content type is already well recognized the HTTP header. I, I completely agree with that approach. I mean, we should not, as, as the earlier person said, we should not duplicate function that we expect to be putting in a, at a higher level in protocol. <laughs> I agree. It. I, Sorry, go ahead. When I, when I looked at uh, for the first time, this is what I was thinking. So if you've got an Angular app which uh, builds a cloud event in memory, and now it wants to use uh, an HTTP API to transmit the event, it needs to work out how the event is going to be serialized on wire, what, what content type it's going to use. So is this field telling me 
that if you're using HTTP transport, then this is where you read the content type from, and this is where it should go eventually in the HTTP header. Or if you're using a different transport, then this is where you read from, and this is the field it should go in for that transport, target transport. Yeah, I mean, this is a fundamental decision about what we're modeling here, and we need to we need to we need to, to formally describe that this is our approach and this is our policy. These things go in the protocol. So that was not clear to me, and uh, I made a lot of comments on that. Uh, I think not still trying to get my head around it. Even now, in logical representation, transport representation, and why representation. So, when if you get some terminology around this, I think it will help us figure out what we're doing. Yeah, I think my my whole assumption around this effort is that we we want to be able to transfer events between one system to another system, and if we want to do that, we also have to define how two independent systems work. I, I mean, a sort of a interoperable messaging scheme. Even if that message scheme will run atop uh, different uh, transports, you know, it can actually you know work over Kafka and then be routed into Kinesis, you're going into, uh, let's say, an Amazon infrastructure, that's okay. You don't want to deserialize and serialize every time you're moving a hop. So we need a definition of how uh, the payload is encoded. Uh, original discussion, some people suggested JSON as the way to do it. And, you know, obviously there are areas where JSON is not appropriate. But, but you're on, isn't it true that... Of how the message is encoded. But isn't it true that, that this content type is about how the data properties or how, how the data field itself is encoded, which for example, may be in JSON. And so the content type here would say, you know, application JSON or whatever it's supposed to be. But then when we actually transmit it on the wire, that could be something radically different, like say XML or something like that, right? I mean, there are two different content types at play here. And this one here yep. is just about how the data itself looks, right? Right, so do you want to create two specs, one for uh, the message and one for the API? Well, I, th I think how, we, how it gets transmitted is, has not been discussed yet in, as part of the spec. I, that's why I assumed the content type here was just about how this field called data is encoded. And, uh, I was thinking how it's transmitted. Should it be part of the spec or it should be outside the spec? If it's outside the spec, then why do we need a spec, you know? A spec is no, something no. where you want to have two ends of a wire talking to to each other in an interoperable fashion. I think that's a larger scope than any of us are ready to tackle, though. I mean, it, I've never seen that really work out. To this is the one and only way everything communicates at a at a protocol and transport layer. No, but again, we have schema URL. So why do we need the schema URL? It's the same. I think it's the same reasoning. You you want the schema URL because you want someone to be able to interpret the message. You want them to interpret the data content. You, if you, in you, the API, I'm going to get all the fields already decoded. Why do I need a schema URL? That schema URL is not for the envelope. It's for the thing that's in the data payload, though, right? Right, but you're saying that eventually it's going to be uh, deserialized, okay, in the API. Uh, you're going to get things already, you know, as language objects. Why do you need a schema? You're assuming that the schema is required for the thing that deserializes in order to form an, a language object that contains a field called foo and you know whatever. Uh, if if you're already deserializing and you're saying the schema URL is required by the guy that deserializes to create the relevant application objects, you know, relevant language objects that have the right fields and do validation on those, etc., then that's also outside the scope. But when we put the two types in here, are, are, aren't we opening ourselves to the fact that this envelope could be in JSON and then the body could be something else like protobuf or something? And like, how's, how's the JSON serializer going to deal with that? It's just, I, I, don't, I don't think our intent, I don't think our intent is to do the full end-to-end. -end, it's to just do the, the data representation of the event itself. Right. I agree with you. That's why it's divided to two sections. One is the context. We're not saying how the schema URL, which is a string, how it's transferred over the protocol. But we are saying that the event itself, which have uh, very different schemas, uh, is decoded. Because for the context, we don't need a schema. We essentially define here already how we, sort of what are the fields 
and if they're uh, mandatory or optional. So we don't need a schema for the uh, context field that we've defined in this document. We don't need a deserialization mechanism because we defined that there are string or other values or URLs, etc. But for the content within the data, we need a way to decipher it. And if we define that we need the schema URL to decipher it, we also need to understand the encoding of that package. So I think Johan is bringing up some really good points about transport and we need to, I think what, what has been discussed earlier is that, or at some point was that we have the semantics of the attributes which apply to where the, the context and the, the metadata attributes are um, sort of one concern, which is what are things that are true for all events, right? And then the data is specific to a specific source that is generating a specific kind, event type. And so um, what this is illustrating is that like schema is not defined. Like what does that mean really? And, you know, I think that um, we need to address that, we, you know, I was thinking maybe that's um, the semantics of the attributes. So what I would suggest is that we pull out this conversation into like a transport question, transport encoding question, right? How are these events transported? And, you know, related to that is your own point on then, you know, after transport and routing and all those things, how, how, what, how does it, how is this interpreted by a runtime? And so I think this is a broader question that we need to address that context in order to have this conversation productively. But isn't part of the reason for this uh, PR that the transport and the content encoding of the transport can be different from the content encoding of the data? that the, the envelope says, you know, the HTTP headers or whatever, they're saying this is the, the entire event and within that event, there are other objects. Uh, this is saying, okay, here is this data object, that's how this one is serialized, which might be different. I think there's two open questions. One is around the semantics of, you know, attributes or whatever that is in the data. The other is how it's encoding. And I think there are different people who make it, uh, making assumptions about, oh, metadata, of course, that will be HTTP attributes, and data, of course, that will be HTTP post body or something. But that's like a bunch of things that we haven't finalized. So it seems to me we have two different conversations going on here, right? We have, how do you specify the encoding of the data attributes? And then we have the entire transport level encoding question. My understanding, Yaron, correct me if I'm wrong here, that this PR is just about the encoding of the data attribute alone. And yeah. I'd like to focus the discussion on that and then have someone volunteer to take the issue or take the, the next step to open up an issue or PR to discuss possible transport level discussions. Right, but I think that we, I, like, I'm, I can't I, uh, like, accept this without the context of like, does, does this invite two layers of encoding? I, I agree, because especially that opens the door to some that might not be compatible. I think if, again, if you want to have a content type defined, then you need to define a strict content type if you want it to be interoperable. So I totally agree it needs to be defined, but many things need to be defined, and I can't decide on this without knowing the other thing. So why do we need a schema URL? Well, for one, it's optional. <laughs> it's it's as well. optional as well. I'm saying they're exactly the same category. I, I understand <laughs> that you're trying to make. The, the thing that I'm trying to avoid, so as, as, you know, as Sarah's mentioned, a lot of us are worrying about, for example, uh, HTTP encoding, which I think we have some intuition and is why we just assume that all these other attributes in the context are no op, there is no encoding. But with something like PubSub, for example, uh, we might actually wrap an entire envelope in as a message, as a pub sub message, in which case um, the content type and the data could either be required to have the same encoding or they could allow double encoding. And I think that without actually, like this is a hugely important discussion that we need to get to a prerequisite of first. Like we need to be able to say, okay, 
do we allow double encoding in situations where we're actually doing the envelope or not? Because like that's my main my main concern is it's not clear yet until we cover transport whether content type should be applying to data, applying to the whole envelope, or like does it depend on the transport? I'll give you another challenge if that's what you're planning. Let's assume someone wants to sign the, the data uh, portion because the metadata doesn't necessarily have to be uh, signed because it may be generated by uh, transport or intermediate routers, etc. Let's assume I want to sign the data. If you're if we're going to change the content type across the hops, I have an IoT sensor that generated a binary message through MQTT and I want to transfer it to PubSub, okay? If you're going to convert it to JSON, you're going to violate the signature that potentially is built into that. Okay, so, so let, me, let me do this. Uh, it sounds like we're not going to be able to resolve this today. What I would like to do is take this conversation back to the PR itself and everybody that has concerns, please add comments and we can have the discussion in there. Um, I don't think we're going to come to a resolution here, so I think people need to go off and think about it. And I'd also encourage you to think about ways to split this up because I'd rather not have a PR that tries to necessarily solve everything at once, but if we can do smaller steps, I think it would be much appreciated. Would, so, it make, uh, would, it, would it make sense to start having these transport or protocol specs or examples being written up uh, alongside this main specification? It sounds like we need to work through those examples to get, achieve clarity here. That may be good. I would actually recommend, though, that we first decide on what is the scope of these properties at all. Because I think what I'm hearing in this call is some people thought that they applied to the transport layer and other people thought, no, they applied just to basically what's in memory and going to be available at runtime. And so I think there's a little a level of disconnect there. So it'd be useful if someone volunteered to take an issue or PR or something to help try to resolve exactly what the scope is. And maybe it's both and we just need to separate the discussions, but we need to get come to agreement on what we're trying to solve here. Okay. Maybe just the suggestion is to split it and say, okay, these are the transport or the message elements, and those are the APIs. I think we had this suggestion in the past. Maybe. So you're on, can I... The APIs will actually be language specific because there are typed languages, untyped languages, etc. So would someone like to volunteer to open an issue to, to try to force that discussion about what is the exact scope of, this, of, the, of the stuff we're talking can about? We... So can, can we everyone everyone who's commented on the call to comment on the PR as well first and then so. from there we decide what we do next. Yeah. I agree with that. It would help to make sure everyone's concerns are captured. Yep, agreed. Okay, and before, so, and before we move on, I'd like to remind people that please don't wait for these phone calls to raise those concerns. Um, I would prefer not to raise what I would call pretty fundamental concerns about the PR only during these calls itself. And this, this PR has been out there pretty much in its current state for several days now. So please try to review these things in advance of the call. That way we can have those discussions um, as best we can offline. All right. So with that, let's move to the next topic. <laughs> Cloudevents.org or Cloudevents.io. Um, okay, so in order to avoid a potential rat hole, what I would like to do is, uh, is give each company, each one person from each company, the opportunity to speak in favor of one or the other, only once, and then we're going to do a vote. I'm going to use the attendance tracker to do a vote, so only people who have been three out of the four times can vote. Um, if someone votes that they would like another week, I'm going to... Uh, accept that because um, this did this, this, this kind of spring up on people. So if you'll want another week, that's fine. But let's, let's go through that process because I don't want to rattle on this too much. Um, so is there anybody on the call from a particular company who wants to speak in favor of one or the other? Cloudevents.io versus cloudevents.org. Okay. Not hearing any, I'm going to go through the checklist of people on the call who have voting rights. So I'd like oh. to hear any discussion of pros and cons. Well, that's what I'm asking. I can for. see arguments for both. Yeah, I put in the um, I put in that sentence there, right? So we are in my mind. I think IO is actually there's a lot of companies that, or a lot of domains that use that IO that it's not appropriate for. But I think here it actually makes great sense because we're talking about events, inputs, and outputs. So yeah, I'd like to hear if there are any arguments against, and if not, then we can consider it unanimous. 
because like um because we had a chit chat and our, uh, you know there's things for there's arguments for both but we're not okay we're not, i'm not okay uh, is there somebody who would like to speak, who has not spoken already, who would like to speak in favor of one or the other? So, uh, I don't have anything against IO, but ARG just uh, indicates traditionally it has been used for things that are open. So this is an open source initiative, so ARG looks more suited. Okay. Anybody else who has not spoken yet who would like to state an opinion? I agree with the last comment. William from Red Hat. I'm sorry, go ahead, William. I'm just going to say I agree with IO as well. Make more sense. Okay. Okay. It, Can you say why it makes more sense, or are you just confirming what it says there? I I agree with the points that were made about being about IO itself, input, output, cloud events, and uh, yeah, pretty much it. So, Dave, uh, Doug, the last two comments were they for four dot IO or four dot org? I thought I they think, were IO. I think William was for IO. And I couldn't hear the one. I don't remember the one before that. I think I think it was uh, Suhas was for dot org. I think I think that was who was speaking. Yep. Okay. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, please, if you've already spoken, hold your hold your hold your tongue. <laughs> Anybody else care to say something? I mean, I have a a weak thought that just I O is hip right now. It might become dated later. I mean, I O is a big notion. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, last time I looked uh, a couple of months ago, IO is not a primary TLD, and so there are issues with that. Um, and so we chose to go with a .org instead of a .io because of that reason. Okay. Anybody else who has not spoken yet would like to say something? I agree okay. with both the comments about uh, um, it. It's sounding more open. And and that uh, it's it's more traditional for the standard groups. Okay. Anybody else who has not spoken yet? Yeah, I like the I, the org. Sorry, I like the org. I think you know if I or if it's just input output, I think we are re a little bit too restricting. Um, okay. In the future, we might extend the scope. Okay. Anybody else who has not spoken yet? Hey, this is Chad. I'm, I'm obviously a big believer in IO, given that we're iron IO, but uh, it's, <laughs> it does tend to be more startup-y, hipper, cooler company, whereas org tends to be more open and it's more traditional. And if we want this to be widely applied, it, it might be, I sort of have a weekly held opinion that .org might be more relevant or appropriate. Okay. Yeah, this is the I, I resonate that uh, that last part of what um, Chad was saying is that it's I don't know how likely it is, but it's possible that folks might confuse it with some kind of a company slash entity. Um, so, okay. Anybody else who has not spoken yet? Okay. Let me ask the higher level question first. Is there any objection to taking a vote at this time? Okay, we're going to do it then. Uh, Suhas, what's your vote? Suhas, you there? So, uh, yeah, I'm here, sorry. Uh, vote? My vote is org. Dot org. Okay. Uh, Kathy, what is your vote? Org. Okay, actually, let me just make sure I didn't miss someone up top. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, IBM. Sorry, Dan, based upon what we saw in the internal chat, <laughs> .org. Um, Yaron, what's your vote? Org. Org. Um, David Lyle, Intel. David Lyle, you still there? Okay, we'll come back to David in a sec. Uh, William, what's Red Hat's vote? I.O. I.O. Um, Klaus, for SAP? Org. Org. Well, oh, gosh darn it. What is uh, Austin. No strong preference, actually, but I think that there's some interest on our team. In Austin, I need an org or, or I need org, IO, or abstain? IO. Okay. <laughs> uh, Lee. 
I'll, uh, I'll toss my hat into the org ring. Okay. David uh, Lyle. David Lyle vo votes for org. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Edith, are you there? David. Lyle, I'm sorry, David Baldwin. David. You see the call? Okay. Not, uh, Mark, how do you guys work with VMware? Org. Org. Okay. Did, is there anybody on the call that I missed who, does, who didn't get a chance to vote? Google. Oh, wait. Where is Google? How did I miss you guys? Mm -hmm. that, that's why. Who's, actually, who, okay, let me ask you right now, who's the alternate for Google? Because we don't have an alternate listed. So um, Sarah is the primary and Rachel is the backup. Oh, I, okay, that's, okay, I'll fix that. Hold on a sec. Okay, in that case, you guys still don't have voting rights. So we'll fix well, that there. Except that we've attended the last three meetings, but. Well, uh, so. Okay, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I have to move up the yes. Okay, so you guys can vote. Yes, go ahead. Sorry. I, my, my spreadsheet's all funky then. You want org or IO? Org. Org. Okay, I think based upon that, orgs wins it. So that's what we're going to go with. Can you have your answer? Thank you, guys. Okay, great. And the .io domain will just forward over to .org then, I guess. Yep. Org wins. IO maps. To... So, Doug. Yes. Can I ask a quick question? So, just trying to understand how moving forward this works. So, for every standard. Uh, the serverless working group uh, decide to work on an establish. We will have a different org behind that standard and a different website for that standard as well. Like that is yet to be determined. That may very well the way that may okay. very well go the that may very well way that very well may be the way we go, but that is yet to be determined. I, I think okay. the point that the events are broader than serverless. Then. Yes, I think once we start getting some right. other proposals for some other things for the serverless working group to consider, and we could kind of see those things taking form, we could have a broader conversation about how these things can be maybe lumped together, or if that's the right approach. Yep. Okay. 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 Now, uh, technically, what's like five till the top of the hour, I don't think we have time to deep dive into anything else. So let me do two things. One, final roll call. Um, Louis, are you on the call? From Huawei? Louis? From yes, Huawei? I am. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. And Dan Rosanova? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, and what about Dan Barker? I'm here. Okay, is there anybody on the call who I did not add to the attendee list and mark your name with an asterisk to acknowledge I heard you? Okay, are there any other quick topics that anybody would like to bring up? Very, very quick, short topic. A uh, quick short topic is uh, the website. Right now it's just a Squarespace hosted website. I think we could keep going uh, using that for like a month or two until we maybe roll our own solution. Um, but I don't know if anyone has any other thoughts about that. Any comments on that? Okay, not hearing any. Okay, All we'll right. just keep keep going with that. And it'll mostly point to the GitHub repo. So I think that should be the center of all of our activity. So I also just want to highlight for our request for like input. Austin and I got together last week and sort of came up with an alternate roadmap for milestones because like we already haven't hit January in a current roadmap. And so if people could just chime in, there's a Google Doc there. I'm, I'm not wed to whatever it is. It's just trying to provide some structure that's more based on named milestones rather than um, dates. All right, and just to confirm, uh, Sarah, Rachel, you said that you want Sarah to be the primary and Rachel to be the alternate, is that correct? Yeah, I did that. I told somebody about Slack and didn't check up on this. Okay, that's fine, so I double check as I go back and change it, okay. In that case, I believe we're done for the day. Thank you guys. Um, one, one more thing, Doug. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Chris, is Chris still on? Chris Anthony, sure. I don't see him. Okay. In, in the Slack channel, there was a um, talk about a, uh, a kind of a catch-all landing page as serverless.cncf.io. 
Um, I didn't know that was a, that's apparently he's going to redirect that to a new repo called serverless dash landscape, which is where the white paper and the, uh, the competitive landscape would be. I don't know. It's kind of the, the canonical thing for our own group here, but um, I guess we'll follow that up in chat and in Slack. Interesting. Okay, cool. All right. Any other last minute comments? All right, so just a quick reminder, please, everybody review the PRs in advance of the meeting, uh, especially the ones that may be um, either controversial or require more deep thought, so we can try to get as many of those resolved offline as possible. All right, in that case, we'll talk to you again next week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank Bye, you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <clears throat>